Hi everyone, this is Dikshit. Uh, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna discuss about init and sidecar containers in Kubernetes. Also, I have a use case wherein I've used init containers and sidecar containers. We'll discuss about that uh, use case also. First, let's see what is init and sidecar containers. Init containers. A pod can have multiple containers. It can be application container, helping container, or it can have one or more init containers also. So init containers basically it will run before your application containers. Before your application container, all the init containers, if it is more than one, so all the init containers will be executed, then your application container will be executed. And then init containers are basically similar to regular containers, but there is little difference between our application container and init containers. Init containers basically always runs to the completion. That means, um, when you execute a deployment file with a init container, it should be successful. If it is not successful, then it will try to restart again and again. Let's say you have multiple init containers. So you have three init containers. So first one, the first container, if it executes successfully, then only it will go to other init container. And also you need to keep in mind, so init containers, after the complete execution, if it is successful, then it will die itself. Okay, so the file system which were there in uh, init container, once it is died, so you, you won't be able to access it. If you want to uh, have the access to the files which has been created in init container, then you need to copy it to some volume and then you need to use it if you, uh, if you want it in other containers. And also init container fails, Kubernetes always tries to restart it until it succeeds. And however, you can change this behavior by setting restart policy to enable. So that time what Kubernetes does is it'll try for one time. So if it is not creating successfully, then uh, it'll make your body also unsuccessful. This is about init container and coming to sidecar container. Sidecar container is also a type of container. As I've already mentioned, uh, pod can have multiple containers like application, sidecar, helper, and uh, init containers. So sidecar containers will usually called as utility containers. So, which basically supports your main container, application container. And also we need to keep in mind, so sidecar container by itself, it won't serve any purpose. It should be attached with any one main container to get uh, functionality done by your sidecar containers. And generally sidecar containers are reusable. You can attach it this sidecar container with many application container. And also you can uh, have multiple sidecar container also in a pod. So this is about sidecar containers. And uh, I have a use case wherein I've used init and sidecar container. The use case is deploying a NGINX using secure HTTPS and push the NGINX logs to AWS S3. Means uh, when I want to access HTT, uh, NGINX, it should be through HTTPS. I need to have a secure connection while if I'm accessing uh, my NGINX from outside. And whatever the logs after the start of nginx will be uh, generated in my uh, application container those logs should be put into aws s3 this is what my uh, use case is to achieve this in my um, deployment file so i have used uh, three containers one is init container application container and sidecar container init container is used to create a certificate file because i wanted to deploy my nginx through secure HTTPS, right? So I need certificates. So that's why I'm using init container. I'm creating a certificate and then that certificate I'm copying it to application container. And in application container also, I'm doing some configuration checks because uh, I need to make it work with HTTPS, right? So obviously I need to do some uh, configuration changes. And this is where my application will be running, basically engine next image. And the next one is after nginx start, so logs will be generated in this container, right? Those logs should be sent to AWS S3. So for that, I'm using a sidecar container. I'm copying all logs from application container to the sidecar container. From the sidecar container, I'm pushing to AWS S3. Okay, now let's see the deployment file. So I'll just explain what are all the things I've used in deployment file. So this is what my do a deployment uh, file looks like. So I have a, one more uh, simple diagram by, by keeping side by side, I'll explain uh, this diagram and also deployment file, so it'll be easy. 
And as you can see, uh, API version is apps v1 and the kind is deployment. I'm creating a deployment basically and I'm giving a metadata. This is my uh, deployment name. And the next part is spec. Uh, this is where actual part begins. So selected for which part I'm creating this deployment, I need to mention here. Because if you see uh, th from this part, it's a pod configuration file, right? So if you see my um, pod as a label, which is my app dip. So I'm taking that as a filter and I'm giving it in a deployment match label. So that like for these pods, this deployment will be created. Okay. And uh, so from here, our pod configuration file will start. So labels and app, I'm given app as my app dip. So I'm given the same value year and year. So that like this pod will be created under this particular deployment. And the next part is spec. So here, uh, as you can see, init container. So I've used um, my image, open, open SSL image, SSL uh, image, basically to create a certificate. And also the name of the container is SSL cert creation. And as you can see, I'm uh, as soon as container comes up, I'm exiting these commands. One is uh, make directory. So I'm just creating a ETC Nginx SSL. And also uh, I am executing an open SSL command. So it generates certificate and key for me. So, and I'm putting into ETC Nginx SSL folder. Okay. And as I've already mentioned, init container will dice uh, after the complete uh, successful completion, right? But I need this certificate should be copied to application container. So for that, uh, so when I run this deployment, so actually uh, it'll run, uh, it'll create a volumes first, then it'll gonna create uh, my containers. So if you can see, I've created four uh, volumes here. One is SSL cert, logs, AWS credential, and Nginx files. So you can see in this diagram, which is in the right side. So, so which is basically whichever they are in hexagonal shapes. So which are my volumes, SSL cert, logs, and also Nginx files and AWS credentials. Okay. So if you see mount path, you can say uh, volumes as a shared folder between two containers, or it, it is a bridge between uh, two containers to exchange the file. Okay. So I've created a volume, right? So SSL cert, and I've given a volume mount. If you see, I've referred this particular volume name here. So what it does, so whatever the files which are there in this particular um, this particular uh, path, yeah, etc, nginx, SSL, so will be copied to this particular volume. Okay. And then, uh, so obviously, init container will dice uh, after the completion, completion of init container. And then uh, comes our application container. So my application container name is my app uh, iPhone dip, deploy dip I have given. And uh, the image is normal nginx HTTP, uh, nginx image itself. I did some changes. I have created one script because uh, I'm doing some changes in nginx configuration, right? After that nginx configurations, I need to reload my uh, nginx. That's the reason I have a script there. So as soon as my um, container comes up, I'm running that script. So that's the reason um, I've did some changes and I've pushed to my image to dockerhub.com. So I'm using that image here. And then I'm saying like I'm using 443 and 8080 ports. I also have a liveness probe. Uh, the liveness probe, so it makes sure my Nginx is up and running. So it will always ping this particular path with the IT port and initial delay is 30 seconds because to load Nginx, maybe I am assuming it might take 30 seconds. That's why I've given uh, initial delay as 30 seconds. After that, every second it will ping this particular path and it will make sure my Nginx is up and running. If Nginx is uh, manually uh, stopped or somebody, because of some reasons it has stopped, then uh, if it doesn't get any replay within a particular time period, so then it will make sure uh, the pod will be down. Okay. And then again, I'm using a volume mounts. So I'm referring the SSL cert. This is a volume. So wherein I have uh, certificate files. So what I'm doing, uh, so now I need that certificate files in my application container, right? So I'm copying uh, those certificates from this particular volume to my application container. 
So I am used the same uh, folder path because um, you can give any path here actually. So where you want to copy. So I have basically I have made a standard uh, whatever the folder structure was there in any container. I will use the same application container also. So that's the reason I have given that. And also now I have a certificate. Or uh, to use that certificate, I need to change your configurations in nginx uh, file side. So in this, that is what I am doing. So I'm using a config map. Config map basically, so if you want to copy uh, some local files, it can be application properties or any config map files from local onto the container. So that time we'll use config maps. There are many other things also that we can do it by using config map. In my case, I'm using it for copying a local file to my uh, pod. Uh, that is what uh, I'm using. That is for I'm using config map. If you see my config map here, so, so this is basically default.conf file. That is where I'm changing. I'm changing uh, the SSL certificate paths and also I'm giving uh, SSL protocols and these three lines have changed. So you can see my uh, config map uh, name is uh, nginx.conf. In a deployment, if you see, um, I've created a, uh, this particular uh, volume, uh, which has a config map, nginx config. So by using uh, config map, whatever the files have created, right? Now it will be there in this particular uh, Nginx file volume. So now uh, in application container, so I'm copying it to, so etc Nginx conf D. Okay, because um, I need these files uh, because I want to make my application container registry details, right? So that's the reason I'm using that. And the next mount path is basically, I want to share my log files to sidecar container, right? So again, I'm using a mount path. I'm uh, storing whatever the files which are present in var logs in GNX. That is where my logs will be available. So that's why I'm putting those into my logs volume. If you see here, I've referred to uh, logs volume. So that's why I've given uh, this particular path. So whatever there in this particular path will be moved into logs volume, okay? And next comes our uh, sidecar uh, container. The name of uh, container is side, sidecar logs, and uh, image I've used is this. So it is basically a AWS CLI image, and then I am running few commands here. I'm just copying uh, some script from one location to another one, and then I have that script I am running it for every ten seconds. I'll just show you what that script is, uh, and then I am doing a um, mount uh, again a uh, mount because I wanted these logs to be there available in this sidecar container, right? That is what I'm doing it here. And also if you see the next uh, two mount paths, so it is basically uh, when I want to push my logs to uh, AWS, I need to authenticate, right? By um, using my secret key, access key. So if you don't know secret key and access key, so I'll just leave a link so which gives a fair idea how to create a secret key access key and how to use it and also, uh, uh, it is basically I'm using AWS, so I'll just gonna create a. I've already created the user uh, access key and secret key. I'm using it here, so so I am just copying that uh, script and also AWS configuration configuration file to this uh, particular path, and I'm uh, copying a script to uh, root scripts path. So so basically the config map looks like this. See, there are two files. One is config which has a region, AWS region, and the script has a uh, uh, few variables. So I'm just exporting those variables. One is access key and secret key. Don't worry, don't use this access key and secret key because after the session, so I'm gonna delete uh, this access key and uh, secret key. And then I'm running uh, AWS sync. So this command makes sure my AWS logs, which are there in a the container and uh, in AWS account is same. Okay, I told you, right, like every 10 seconds, uh, this particular script will be running. So if you see my deployment file, so you can make out, I'm executing the script uh, and executing sleep 10. So after 10 seconds, again, I'm running a while loop, right? So I, this will be executed. Okay, this is about uh, my deployment file and config files and uh, service file, one service I'm creating. So this HTTP and also 44, prefer uh, HTTPS. So this is a basic um, service file. And let's get into the practical part and uh, then we'll see a demo. Okay. And 
uh, I am into my uh, Kubernetes master. So I've already downloaded uh, uh, all the files like deployment file and config map file. Basically, I've just cloned it from uh, GitHub. So I'll just paste uh, uh, this link also, GitHub link, uh, where I have uh, all the config maps and deployment file and also service file. So I'll I'll give a link in uh, description. You, if you're uh, if you want to replicate the same in your machines, you can go ahead and you can clone it. So let's create uh, config maps first. Then we'll create a deployment because so con deployments needs config map, right? Because it is copying some files from local to uh, onto the pod. So that's the reason. First, you need to create a config map, and then you need to create service, and then we'll create a deployment. Okay, so this is small application, so that's why we have only four files. So let's think of a big project, so complex project. It might have multiple objects, so you need to run it in order. So or else, like it will be errored out. So this is um, in complex pro projects, so it is very difficult to uh, see in what order we need to create the objects and all. To our to solve this problem, there is something called as Helm. So it solves this particular. Uh, problem wherein uh, it only manages all this kubernetes uh, management which one should be created first and which one created should be next and all so elm will solve this problem so let's create uh, config maps first so to create that so kubectl apply f and config map aws i'll create Okay, and then kubectl apply iPhone f config map nginx. So now if I do kubectl get config maps, so then I have uh, two config maps one is basically AWS configuration which has two files and nginx conf which has one file. Now let's go ahead and create our uh, kubectl. Always the best practice to create a service before uh, your deployment. Okay, kubectl apply iPhone F uh, nginx service. Okay, and then uh, just check whether it is created or not. kubectl okay services. Yes, it has been created. You can see uh, one is for eighty, and then one another one is double four three. So let's create a, a deployment. So basically, the file name is uh, nginx deployment. Okay. Now, if you see uh, my, let's see. Yes, you can see one pod is already up and running. So one more is creating. So one is. Um, already up and running right so we can access that uh, particular uh, application so my node ip is this one so let's so i can access through https so the port is uh, if you can see three one double five seven, three one double five seven. So yes, uh, it is secured, and uh, let's proceed. Let's see whether we'll be able to get nginx homepage or not. It's loading, so I guess. I guess still uh, nginx is so it'll take yeah you can see now my nginx welcome page is there and also uh, as I mentioned so the logs should be there in AWS S3 right so we'll just verify that also AWS console so as uh, s3 and then my bucket name is dikshit sn so 
I'll just see uh, any locks in it. Yes, you can see uh, five seven. So I have some log files, access logs. So when I um, access my application again, so within ten seconds I will get the logs. You can see. I mean, there will be increase in the size of this particular file. So I can see it was one KB. Now it is one point three KB. So that means it is updating my logs as. Um, I mean, there is a delay, obviously, uh, 10 seconds. That's what. If you want to uh, execute that particular shell script every second, you can do that. But I wanted to make sure uh, every 10 seconds. So that's the reason I've given that. And yeah, so this is what my use case. Also, um, coming to the tips. So you can always, uh, when you're writing uh, uh, YML files, you can go for uh, editors like uh, Code, uh, Visual Studio Code, or something like Atom. Atom. So, which has basically a plugins, Kubernetes plugins. When you're writing your uh, deployment files or service files, it has an intelligence, it gives good suggestions. You can write your uh, YML files very easily. So, example, so see, whenever, let's say I want to create some um, secret. So, I want to type API version, right? So, when I type API version, see, intelligence is there, it is showing API version. When I click on this, so it is. It comes in my file, so which is really useful, right? So, so which comes very handy, so you can avoid many errors. So when you're writing your YML files and all, you can go for these kind of tools. I personally prefer VS Code is better than Atom. So yeah, uh, that's all for this video. Uh, thank you. If you have liked the video, please uh, share and subscribe. Thank you. In the next video, I'll be discussing about uh, issues I've faced in Kubernetes uh, project when I worked in. Kubernetes projects or whatever the issues I've faced, I'll do a video on that. Please have a look at that also. Thank you.